All right, everyone, welcome to this evening's webinar titled Darknet Signals by John Broussard. Uh, I'm Tom Gentile hosting the event tonight. And like I said, with me is John Broussard. John is the, uh, he is not only the, the brains behind Tom's option tools, but he is also the founder of the Darknet Signals. And so I thought it would be great to get him on here to talk about Darknet Signals. And what a great day to do it with the Dow being down greater than 350 points. Uh, you know, I, I, I get questions all the time. Does Darknet work in a huge down market? Well, we're going to find out. I, I think what you're going to find out is that Darknet has its own methodology uh, for picking buys, uh, not only when to buy them, but when to sell them. And without any further ado, let me introduce John Broussard. John. Hello, I'm John Broussard. I'm going to be giving this presentation on darknet signals. First, uh, some disclaimers. Uh, it's copyrighted. Uh, please don't disclose the contents and uh, with outside parties. Uh, and if you do so, please indicate you got it from optionsanalysis.com and tomsoptionstools.com. This presentation is not a recommendation or advice to buy or sell anything, and there's no guarantees for what you see, and there's always risk trading stocks and options and option strategies with insect and bird names. Where did Darknet signals start? Inside Tom's options tools, inside the chart program, there's a, you can go over there and you can ask for it to, uh, over a period of, of days, from a start date to an end day, you can say what was the best up channel, the best sideways channel, and the best down channel that happened inside that time period. And it will go off and find those channels. And here's an example of it finding channels uh, at a certain date and time. And you see there was there's a nice uptrend going here. And then, uh, but more recently at that end of that chart, red chart there, there's a strong down channel. And it was, at the time I was uh, investigating this, uh, it looked like an Elliott wave to me. And I was wondering if, uh, if there was any relationship between these up and down channels and Elliott waves. And uh, I was discovering that, uh, in fact, this stock was was an Elliott wave. Uh, I think it was a wave five buy at the time I was looking at it, imposing these channels on top of it. And I was noticing it 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 was supposed to be bullish, and it, it just wasn't turning out that bullish. And so, the question that occurred to me was uh, was there any kind of mathematics I could construct where I could take these three channel patterns and uh, and and ask, you know, wh what would a bullish pattern look like? Is, is there a mathematical answer to that question? Well, so I, I put all that mathematics together and, and sure enough that there, there was a, a bullish channel pattern that the mathematics found and all of that mathematics and technology I ended up publishing it in a paper uh, with Jay Kappel in the uh, May 2014 technical analysis of stocks and commodities magazine it's that second paper you see there, Darknet Channels. Uh, the image on the right-hand side they put on the cover is, uh, is actually uh, an image from Darknet, and the, the cap shows Darknet in the uh, orange cap. You probably never noticed that before, and he's looking at Hogg, which was uh, Harley Davidson, one of the stocks I discussed in the paper. Um, I found the Darknet Channels pattern uh, somewhere around 2012. I put it online, and, and I haven't changed it since. When I was first looking for the, what was the bullish pattern, uh, it, it, it came up with an answer and I went out and charted it and this chart came up. And when I first looked at the chart, I says, huh, wow, I have a bug in my software <laughs> because it didn't make any sense to me at the time that stock's just crashing down and it wants to say this is bullish. Uh, so I looked far and wide for the bug, countless days and hours and weeks and never found it and decided, well, this must be what the bullish channel uh, is, is looking like. And uh, as I would chart these things over and over, it, it, would, it would turn out, well, that was the bullish channel. Right after it decided that it found this pattern, the stock turns. And the pattern it was finding is, is if, if, the, if the up channel is inside or very close to being inside of the down channel, uh, at the same time, that's an indication of bullishness. In other words, it's a contrarian pattern. It, uh, I, I was asking for it to find a bullish pattern that would give me something I can trade 
with 20 or 30 days to go. I was asking for something that would be, I would, be, or I would buy calls and I would be getting out of the calls before the call would expire at the next expiration month. So I was asked, I was really looking for very specific one month bullish pattern channel finding and this is what it discovered. Then I, as I was constructing it and looking at it, I, uh, when I put it together, I actually asked it to find all kinds of patterns and I also asked it to find a bearish pattern and uh, and it did and uh, I was amazed the bearish pattern looked very similar to the bullish pattern except that in the case of the bearish pattern if the if the if the down channel is inside the longer up channel the red the red one there is the longer up channel the down channel is the other channel as well as the sideways channel if they all kind of line up together going up that was bearish in other words it was it was pretty much the opposite of bullish the other thing that was got me pretty excited when I found this was both of them were using the same set of days and uh, the days are up there it's a uh, you search between 5 and 12 days from today for the best up the best down the best sideways channel and whenever they all line up together uh, it 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 kicks out that it's found this pattern that you should go off and investigate as bullishness or bearishness and those patterns turn into these signals on the website. Wherever you see a B, that's detected a bullish pattern, and wherever you see an S, that's detected a bearish pattern, and they're being put together, and one's being traded after the other. Um, this is uh, Alteria, I think it's the cigarette company, and uh, it's, it's, it trades the darknet signals very well. I'll show you how you can go investigate and just and see historically in the testing parts of the software, how you can see how well it's been doing and what it does. You see there's some other symbols here. There's an R symbol and there's some dots on the screen and I'm going to explain these to you here. Whenever Darknet first decides it's found a bullish pattern, uh, we put a buy on the screen. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, once it's done its final update and done all of its pattern searching, that buy uh, stays there forever and doesn't change. Um, it only searches for a buy if there has been a prior uh, bullish S that's happened in the stock before the buy. Otherwise, it doesn't search anymore. Once there's a bullish pattern, if things go on and it discovers the bullish pattern happens again, we'll put an R symbol on there. That's a rebuy. If you, were, if, if you decided you wanted to be bullish in this particular stock, uh, the rebuy means that you should probably uh, buy more. And furthermore, if you're buying more, you're almost certainly buying it at an even cheaper price. After some investigation and looking at all the bullish patterns that could happen at one time, we eventually added a, a third symbol, which you, often, you don't often see that much, except you happen to be seeing it a lot at this moment during very bearish times. It's the A symbol. It indicates that there was a buy, there was a rebuy, and now every bullish pattern that the thing can produce has triggered, and we put an A symbol uh, on the stock chart, indicating this is a, this is, we're going to call it the add-on pattern. Uh, it's as far as Darknet will go, trying to get into a stock at lower and lower prices to try to get some profit out of the trade. As the trade goes on, uh, after you have a buy or you have a rebuy, if you see any dots that are appear in the chart, and I, I had some over here, let me see if I can back up here. Those little dots you see after the buy signal that happened on uh, 2015, June 6, before June 16th, somewhere in July, the dots start. What that means is darknets, uh, the bearish pattern has occurred, but we wait for a, uh, a significant uh, rotation in the in the up channel before we'll trigger a sell signal. So it's look it keeps looking and looking and looking until it gets a, a good rotation in the up channel, then it decides to sell. So once you see the dot patterns, that means the basically the, the pattern's been the, the bearish sell pattern's been triggered. We don't have an actual sell yet, but one's going to happen shortly whenever the stock turns. Then when the stock turns we put the S symbol and that means uh, basically get out of the trade. I'm going to show you where you can uh, backtest Darknet. Uh, there are many stocks 
uh, over the last five years that have had no losses with Darknet. Uh, one of them is uh, is the stock symbol SRE. I think it says for Sampra Energy. Uh, it looks like that. Recently, however, in the oil-related stocks, things have uh, just not been good at all. It's been just it's just been nonstop bearishness starting from sometime in May in many instances. They were responding well to bullish and bearish dark net up and down patterns. You can see an earlier one that happened in February and then was taken out in uh, the middle of April. But since then, it, it found a bear pattern, bullish buy. Then it continued to go down. It found the R pattern. And then it just went down considerably more until eventually triggered all of the bullish patterns at once and you get the A symbol. You'll notice that after the A symbol, it's kind of studied out, but today was 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 uh, not so good for all stocks again. That's the end of my um, formal presentation. Uh, I'm now going to go on the website to uh, show some of these things working in action. Uh, I'm going to first go over to the home page, and we're going to look at the dark net signals that are occurring there. I'm going to show you how you can... Uh, back up time and see dark deck signals prior to today. Then I'll show you how you can just move back in time to prior days and look at what was happening with darknet back then and how the web page responds when you do that. Then we're going to go look at um, two stocks that also happen to be in the Dow Jones 30 that have been behaving extremely well with darknet patterns and I'll kind of show you why that's happening. Uh, and then I'll show you uh, once you decide to uh, save a trade. Uh, there is a places in the website where you can follow your save trade and see if any future dark deck si signals happen in those save trades. Over here, if you go to Tom's Options Tool login page, I uh, a couple of days ago uh, put up these two charts right here. Uh, the first one is uh, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola has, uh, I can uh, back test Coca-Cola for five years with dark net signals and during those five years it had um, 19 wins and one loss. Coca-Cola is an example of a stock that has this up and down motion that dark net captures. You can see it over here on the left hand side. There was a buy signal here. Uh, it got out here looked for another buy signal when we had this deep down uh, draft here that occurred, got out here, then there was a, a small uh, down draft here, then a bigger one that got the rebuy signal, it got in there, eventually uh, got out with the rebuy with a profit and the buy about even over here on this cell, found another buy signal and very, very recently it had a sell signal in Coke. And this, this business of a stock sort of moving sideways but having an up and down pattern uh, somewhere between 5 and 15 days for each pattern to work out. That's exactly the kind of thing that Darknet looks for, finds, and takes advantage of. Another stock doing very similar things is uh, Coca-Cola, I mean is Boeing. Uh, Boeing stock, especially most recently, uh, went into this sideways, uh, up and down uh, pattern motion sometime with 5 to 15 days between the patterns. Darknet would buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here, and it's, it's sold most recently and is, is, is out of Boeing. Uh, those are examples of stocks that fit the Darknet searching pattern problem very well. Um, the one I showed you with the energy stock is an example of a stock when it's just in a large downtrend. That's that's really not what Darknet is built to look for. It's not built to look for long trends. Something like moving averages, crossovers would be some, a, a different strategy you could use if you're interested in trading longer trends over longer time periods with options longer than one month. Um, and in fact, uh, uh, the moving averages is uh, one of the other tools we have online at optionsanalysis.com, but we won't be getting that into that here. Once you log in, once you log in, um, this is today, I, logging in today. Uh, some of you log in directly to uh, options tools, which would look like this page. To go over and look at the darknet signals, you go to home, darknet signals, and this page loads. 
This page uh, is filled with uh, three rows of colors that you see here. There's, I'm sorry, two rows of colors. The first row is uh, what stocks in the all darknet stock list have a signal happening. In this case, uh, there's a signal happening in each one of these stocks. I'll click on this. When you click on one of these stocks here, it'll bring up the chart and show you the signal. There's an A that's occurring here in the stock uh, BIP. Uh, and there are similar signals that are occurring in all three of these guys. But you notice only SCCO made it to this line here. Uh, when, you log when I switched over to Darknet Signals, it found every stock with a signal happening today, searched for what we have discovered is the best uh, call trade to trade in those particular stocks, and then verify to make sure that it met certain requirements, that the slippage is less than 1.5% in the call option and the delta is between certain parameters. And if that's true, it displays them. So some of these others are clearly not doing very well in slippage and don't end up, and they, they do have call options, but it's less, it's, it's greater than 1.5% and they don't show up. I could probably make them appear if I'd like increase this to 10% and click uh, refresh. And sure enough, uh, here they all are, and here's their slippage. And th these would not be tradable call options. The slippage is just high, and, and they, it's accompanied by the fact that the percent of double is not too great. Underneath, the, uh, uh, this is, as, is basically a search for the best call options in the stocks that are happening now. If you just, I'm going to go to an earlier date in the past where this, these things were looking much better, and I'll show you that if there's anything here that you'd like to trade, you simply click under call trade, you click on the trade being shown here, and you'll go off into the risk graph and you can save the trade and keep going. Below the buy signals are the sell signals that are happening today. Um, the color coding here in the buy signals is what's happening in, 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 in one day. So for example, even though we had a, this is a big down day in the stock uh, BIP, it had an up candle, whereas the stock with the red background, BTE, it, it had a down candle, and it's another energy stock reaching an A trade. That's the color coding for the top line. The color coding for the bottom line is these are all the cells, and this color coding is telling you uh, how Darknet did. So if Darknet did great, you get, a, you get a really nice green signal. And here's an example. USG, Darknet had a buy and a rebuy, and then it's, it just sold today. And you can see Darknet did great in USG, and that's why there's a nice green signal here. If Darknet did not do as well, you get the, uh, when it's breaking even, you get yellow, and as it does less better, you get closer and closer to redder colors. Clicking on that guy right there, we bought and rebought here, and we finally got a sell signal, but, but this stock is, is not doing well. So Darknet has, has gotten out of these guys, you would say to yourself, well, what has happened recently inside Darknet over the last couple of days? Well, that's very easy to do. You come up here to past days, and let's just try five past days. Type the number five in there and click refresh. When you do that, Darknet's going to go over the five days and show you everything that's happened. These were all the buys that have happened over the last five days. There's, there's a bunch of them. And these are all the cells that have happened over the last five days. And there's, a, there's many green cells and then a, a couple of red cells. Uh, these last uh, couple of days have just been bearish. And, and this is a strictly a bullish finding pattern. So uh, this is not necessarily the time period under extreme bearishness where you want to jump into dark net and start trading. But someday soon, it, it it could be that this is maybe what you want to, what you would want to be doing when, when uh, once the bear markets uh, reach the end. September and October are never really good times to be really bullish, and probably I'm expecting the market to keep going down. But I'm really just a programmer. The stocks I want to show you are Boeing and uh, Coca-Cola. Let's go over here to a stock chart, and if you go over here to stocks charts, stock charts, it'll bring you up this page. If you would like to see dark net action inside your stock chart, under here under chart type, come down to the bottom where it says dark net, make sure you got your symbol there, 
and click update and it will go off and do a darknet chart of your stock showing you the buys and sell signals that happen and if you say you know I'd like to see a lot more well you can increase the size of your chart making it larger and then you can use this time control located up here on the right hand side and start moving in time you can see that coca-cola is a sideways moving stock that's really amendable to the darknet pattern trading mechanism it's got a nice buy here a nice sell another nice buy nice sell another nice buy nice sell a really great buy and a sell then it's first rebuy but then it got it back then lately there was a buy and a sell and it, it's, it's out of the stock at the moment coca-cola really trades the darknet pattern very well when you're ready to bring back time you just hit the reset button now we see that this buy signal happened sometime before July 31st somewhere around the 29th so I moved over here I, I went back to uh, home darknet I moved the date over to the 29th and when I did that this showed up this was the uh, happier times in the stock market uh, everything green here means that everybody had it, all these stocks had a bullish one day that day uh, and Darknet uh, thrived on these conditions and put out a bunch of buy signals that day and here's the Coca-Cola buy signal and here's the Boeing buy signal. Uh, we see that uh, Coca-Cola has a 0.3% slippage, Boeing has a 0.3% slippage, you know, these are a lot better slippage numbers than what we were looking at today. Uh, these are stocks inside uh, the S&P 500, Dow Jones 30, S&P 100. Uh, th this was a good day to buy these guys and they have very low slippage and their percent to double numbers are very nice, only 3.6% and 3.9% for Coca-Cola and Boeing. So on this day, this is what you're, if, if you would, if on the day that where 729 was the very latest date, this is exactly what you would have seen and this would have come up and if you said, you know, I want to trade Coca-Cola, you would simply click on this link right here which would have opened up a risk graph and when the risk graph would have come up it would show you again the the darknet signals and the latest buy signals and you would see the kind of call option that darknet trades we I did substantial studies I, I had this signal gener pattern generating signaling system and you had and I you could, I wanted to ask the question what is the best call option to trade that matches the way these patterns are buying and selling over a 12 to a 10 to a 30 day system and it decided that the best thing to do was to trade something around 20 to 40 days in the, into the future with a with around a, a delta somewhere between 60 and 80 now ie the call option is is uh, is in the money and that way if if you do get the bounce off the bullish signal and it moves up, you already have really good delta and can capture the uh, the the uh, upswing in the stock pretty quickly uh, as the stock moves up. And you can see if the stock moves up just a little, we're almost reaching 100% delta very quickly. So I saved off those uh, two stocks on this particular day for Coca-Cola and Boeing. And if you want to see uh, what if you have saved stocks inside a folder and you'd like to see their action, you come here to Home Darknet Signals just like I've done here and there's another button here called Save Trades. And if you click on that button, it will switch over to the display that's showing your folders, your stock list and your saved trades. And it takes any saved trades that uh, are uh, today, uh, today or older and displays them down here. If there is any action in your save trade, I have I saved that Boeing trade and I saved that Coca-Cola trade inside a folder I'm calling Vector Calls. And if there's any action in the trade, you'll get a giant B here on the trade. We're going to move up one day to the 30th. I want to show you what happens to the B signal. Uh, oh, I went the wrong way. I went to June 30th and so the B signal gets gets very much smaller 
and that means the action has already happened and it's shown over here down in the chart. Now uh, we want to see what, what the cell signal is. I don't quite remember what date the cell signal was on. It looks like it was 31, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, somewhere around the 7th. Oh, I know. I can go over here. I'm going to change it over. Let's try the 7th. I, went, I think I went the wrong way again. I have to go to August. When I, uh, the the sell signal, uh, we're still in the buy, but here's but I happened to get one that ended up coming up. Here's XLU. You click on it. And when the sell signal happens, you get the giant S there, and then there's the sell signal that's happening in the utility sector. Uh, if I would continue on and start stepping through the days, we'd eventually reach the, the sell signals in Coca-Cola and Boeing, and that would be your indication to get out. Now, going back to the home page again, I wanted to show you some other things that are happening here. You say to yourself, okay, well, here's here's the buys and sell signals that were happening in the, what, in the list called all darknet stock lists, but I really would prefer only to trade, say, maybe uh, the, NAT, the 100 stocks in the NASDAQ. I really only want to trade darknet signals in those two stocks. Well, how could I do that? And that's easy. You come over here and you select the list you're really interested in. It could be one of your saved lists if you have those up here or any of the pre-computed lists, and I'm going to select the NASDAQ 100. The website will refresh and show you only the darknet buys and sell signals that are occurring inside the NASDAQ 100. We can see that uh, over the last five days there's just nothing going on except in Qualcomm. Qualcomm's start, stock chart looks like this. We had a buy signal over here and of course today was a down day. Uh, we had a number of sells, all of which were very good. Uh, here, for example, is uh, CTSH where the buy and sell signal happened. And the greener this is, the better Darknet did on that particular uh, set of symbols. So that's how you can narrow it down to uh, just NASDAQ or let's try the S&P 100, which is going to have some um, going to have some oil companies in there. So here they are here. Some of them did good. ExxonMobil did not. Uh, and uh, these were in the uh, S&P 100. Let's go back to all darknet stock symbols, and I'll show you. You say to yourself, you know, we'll, we'll have better days than today, but let's just work with today, and let's just work with some of the more recent symbols. So I'll switch this to just one day. And you say to yourself, uh, is there anything in here worth trading? Is there anything that has really good historical back test performance. Uh, I have to pick one of these guys. There's 14 of them. I Probably not all of them are that good. How could I tell? Well, there's a way. Unclick the cell checkbox over here on the left hand side and click on the replace button. That's going to move the buys, rebuys, and the A signals inside the list, my stock list that you see right here. Save signals to my stock list. Once you have them in there, you move over here and click on stocks which I'm going to do right now. Stocks is a darknet backtester. It's, it's built for darknet backtesting, and it loads with my stock list as the list ready to go. It doesn't check the sell signal and just checks the buys and rebuy signals, but I only have it at 365 days. It'll backtest one year. Uh, we're going to go further back to the limit that it can do, which is 1,500. And this will probably take all 30 seconds, so there may be a little bit of quiet time here while we wait for this thing to come back. And we'll click search. John, well, that while didn't we're take waiting. That long. Oh, wow, that didn't take <laughs> that didn't take that long. We see over here, uh, from a back test point of view, there's some good guys here at the top, and then there's some guys who are just not darknet compatible here at the bottom. Some of the guys who seem to be responding well to Darknet, like uh, up here, uh, BIP, eight wins, one loss. Uh, if you say to yourself, okay, well, I might be interested in that guy. Uh, over here underneath 
stock darknet pop charts where it says pop charts and you'll see this on a lot of the other searches inside times options tools you'll see something either called pick or called dark you can click on it and it'll pop up a chart right here of Tiva and showing you the signals that have recently happened in Tiva and what's happening right now and although we had a buy signal yesterday we have of course had a bad day today and that's this red bar that you see right here but overall Tiva has responded uh, BI, Tiva and BIP have done very well with Darknet. Now, uh, let's go over here and uh, so you say, well, these one, somebody up here might be somebody I might consider trading. However, in my opinion, we're in bearish times, and you you got to you got to pick your 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 trades carefully these days. But this would be one way to try to scout them out. S staying with this this theme here of showing you how this uh, backtest searcher works. You might say to yourself, well, how has Darknet been doing, let's say, on the Dow Jones 30 altogether? I'd like to see everybody. I want to see all 30 stocks. I want to see how Darknet traded on them. I want to see everything from 2011 to 2015. How do I do that? Well, you pick Dow Jones 30 over here. You change this to 1500, and then you click the sell box right there. When you click the sell box, it's going to show everything in the list that it can. Now, this might take a bit. Let's see what happens here. Ah, didn't, did pretty good. So when you don't see anything under the trade leg, that means Darknet's not in that trade. And when you see something under the trade leg, that means Darknet is in the trade. So for example, in the past, it's gone into Johnson & Johnson, way over here, and hasn't found a sell signal, but J&J's just been moving sideways ever since. J&J, just trades, just moves up and down too fast. It, Darknet can't find its 512 pattern in there too much. It's especially having trouble with finding the, the sell signal that matches the pattern that it's searching for. Uh, but but J and J historically has been pretty good inside Darknet. Nine wins, one loss. Over here is United Health Group has never had a loss, and most of these other guys have been doing well with maybe just one or two losses. We don't get down here probably in, in Caterpillar and uh, IBM uh, and ExxonMobil have been the guys who have not been as great finding these particular kinds of patterns. But, but over here is another gray box giving you a complete summary. In all the dark net trades that happened uh, for the Dow Jones 30, 86% uh, of the stocks uh, were profitable, and of the each individual trade that happens, it's running at about 75% of them work. Now, this is Darknet stocks. Um, in addition to this, there's an even more powerful tool called Darknet calls. Now, here's another thing you all probably don't know. The entire upper navigation bar uh, is built not only to work with your mouse, but it was built to work with your finger. So if you're in an iPad and you, you can bring up uh, Tom's options tools and you can navigate with your finger. Now I happen to be on my laptop and my laptop has a touch sensitive screen. So I'm going to actually be, I'm now navigating with my finger. So I touched on searchers. And if some of you have trouble with the mouse and it kind of moves around and you have a touch sensitive screen, well, start using your finger because I'm going to just click on that then I'm going to click on darknet searcher and then I'm going to click on calls. Oops, wrong guy. Try one more time. Calls. Just like in Darknet stocks, Darknet calls can do everything Darknet stocks can do, except it does it with options. So I'm going to switch that, and I'm going to turn on the sell signal, and I'm going to click the search button. Now, this is going to take a little bit longer, because it's instead of just simply looking inside the stock database, it's going in, and whenever there was a buy, wherever there was a sell, it's got to go into that uh, database and grab the information out and trade it. Now, it, it just so happens, uh, before I, I started this presentation, I changed my max time in my general settings from 30 seconds to 10 seconds because I wanted things to happen fast, and that's why there's 10 seconds here, that's why there's a continue button here, and that's why it responded so fast because I, 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 I arranged for all that to happen on purpose. And then it, it, not all the stocks have been analyzed yet, uh, but here they are. Uh, you're going to see more losses here, but when you have winners, the winners are going to be a lot bigger. 
uh, and you're going to have much, much, much bigger uh, rates of return, approximately the same profit profitability, but the, not every trade is going to be profitable because sometimes even when the stock moves up a little, the call option doesn't make money because time goes by. And that's typical of, of, of the difference between trading stocks and trading calls. There's much better returns, but not as many profitable trades will happen even for the same set of signals. How we, I mentioned to you, we did back test studies. I actually did the back test studies with the tool you're looking at. And how we did the back test studies, if under search criteria, there's a show and a hide. Almost all the searchers on, inside the website have this show and the hide. And basically, I'm hiding uh, a lot of more complicated details that perhaps you don't want to know. But if you do want to know them, you can certainly go look at them. And I'm going to click on show. Show is going to show you the two things I was seeing. How far back from the close should the strike be? And by the way, negative numbers will work there. So I could search at the money, in the money, and out of the money and try to find out what was the best percentage number. And how far in minimum in time should I go? It will search for the call closest to 20 days or more from now. I could put that at one day and trade weeklies and see how Darknet does with weeklies, or I could put that at 30 days and see how Darknet does trading at least more than a month in the future. I did all those studies, and these ended up becoming the best numbers to trade, 5% of the money at 20 days out. And that's how that this was used to, to do Darknet searching. Um, Let's see, was there anything else I wanted to talk about? Uh, no, I think, Tom, that, that was about it. That's really all there is to Darknet. It's, it's trying to find calls. It's trying to find calls that you're going to get out in 20, 20 days or, or just a little over 20 days. So it's trying to find a extremely bullish pattern it can uh, take advantage of. It works well with stocks that are matching the pattern. Doesn't it's not really a trend-following system, so it doesn't follow big trends. It doesn't follow uh, steep bearishness that are occurring in some stocks that are occurring right now. But that's how it works. It, it'll, it'll work it completely in backtest mode. You can backtest it, and you can look at things for, we're going for the past 10 years, and you can see how groups of stocks form together as a group in terms of their percent bullishness and uh, how often they trade. And... I showed you that if you're thinking of trading a stock, uh, you can go into uh, calls over here or stocks over here and backtest just that stock and, and see how it's working and see if maybe if this is a stock you want to trade. And I'll put Boeing up here to show you how I got some of the Boeing numbers. So Boeing, 14 trades, 13 wins, one loss, and uh, trading calls. So Boeing, Boeing was very amendable to calls. 92% of the calls it traded worked. It has almost a 40% rate of return on the calls that it traded. Uh, one of those trades uh, had a nice profit. This was the worst case loss. It's got a 13 to 1 ratio. If you just stick to trading uh, Boeing stock, it has an average loss of 85 and an average profit of 1,200 per trade. We're trading $2,000 per call option trade, so we find however many contracts make $2,000, and that's where these dollar numbers originate from. Well, Tom, that's about it. That's all there really is to Darknet. Uh, we can take some questions. Well, John, you did such a great uh, presentation. You answered almost all the questions uh, when you rounded out the last uh, few minutes here. I, I mean, the, the only question I got, which I, I think you already kind of answered, and it, and it really is a tough one to answer, is does Darknet work better for buying the stock or using options? You can, uh, Darknet works for either, and what you can do is, uh, well, when you buy the stock, you have to put out a lot more money. In other words, when you put out only when you put out two hundred dollars for the call option, you're buying a lot of shares and you get a lot more action, and you can get much much bigger rates of return, and your losses can be quite small. Uh, when you're buying the stocks, you're having to put up all those hundreds of shares of dollars to buy the stock. You're not going to get anywhere near these rates of return. So what you do is go over here, go over here to Darknet calls, find out how this stock is responding to Darknet calls. You're looking for something like Boeing, which does very well with the calls. And if there's a latest buy signal on it, 
And here's the next key thing. You yourself need to also be bullish on the stock. In other words, don't trade this in, in, in oblivion, not knowing what the world's doing, but use this as a, as a guide to give you advantageous times and positions when to enter something that you also are bullish on and, then, and, and where Darknet has had good historical backtest performance trading it, and then you would consider taking that trade. And uh, let me remind everybody, because I see it, I see a couple comments on here about the sell signals. The sell signal, everyone, is an exit to the long trade. It is not a trade that you immediately get short. It's simply an exit on the long side. Am I right, John? That is correct. Uh, I, I want to mention that uh, when I when I found the bullish pattern, I says, well, there, let's go look for a a a tradable bearish pattern, and. Uh, all the same code, all the same software, and a lot of searching, and there, I, there just is not a tradable bearish pattern out there that this particular kind of pattern finding can locate at all. All right, good, good. Uh, uh, thanks for the extra comment. And you know what? I mean, there's just there's a lot of questions on here, a lot of comments. Great session, thanks. Um, here's one, and I want to, you know, you can decide how much you want to dive into this, but. Um, uh, when do you, you know, question is, when do you go with spreads? Uh, I, I, I can kind of answer that, but I want to know what you think. Well, it just so happens that I, I kept a, I, I, while I was searching for different ways to trade Darknet, uh, I, I knew calls was the nice, simple way to go, and I built it all around it. It's, it's just real easy to use. You're, you're just trading simple calls. Uh, how simple can it be? But then I also looked at, at spreads. Uh, put put credit spreads, in fact, and they're right here. I left it online. Uh, why don't we, uh, I, I, I have not even tested this out for, for months, so we're, we're, we're gonna all be looking at this for the first time, including me, and uh, let's just move over here to the Dow Jones 30 that I, we already have some data on. Uh, I will indicate that uh, I did do some uh, extensive back test analysis. We're gonna be trading puts, uh, we're gonna be trading uh, they're 4% 4, 4 down uh, from the close in the money, but only 15 days out, and they have to have a 25% uh, risk-to-reward ratio to be tradable, so we will not necessarily find as many uh, put credit spreads as we can find calls, uh, but since we're trading the Dow Jones 30, there will probably be just as many, uh, and let's go off and, and, and see what this thing has to say, uh, and I'll be honest with you, I have not looked at this in months. I have no idea what it's going to say. I mean, some Let's people, see. John, some people are already kind of answering the way I would have is that, you know, you would use a spread on something that's that's uh, much higher priced where the call options just don't make sense on their own. Um, you know, that's that's something. But you, you're you're going in a completely different direction, showing everyone you've actually created a way of backtesting the spread. So continue. So the, the Dow Jones 30 has been back backtested on these put credit spreads. And uh, wow. 90% of each individual credit spread worked. Uh, that's well. That's because a lot of times the things. A lot of times stocks just go sideways or just go up a little bit. And if that's what they do, in, in, in addition to just going straight up, they'll go sideways. Well, that's when the, the credit spread is is going to do better than a call straight call option. It doesn't make as much money. The the rate of return is not as big, but the percent of uh, times that it works is is considerably better. Uh, and uh, gee, look at this. Johnson and Johnson and CVX never had a loss. The others are just one. Now, uh, oh wait a minute. No, that's it. Uh, that's 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 all I'm showing uh, for now. I, I I go look and see. It should have put out more guys, but this is the guys that it tested. It also shows you the trade uh, right here uh, that it recommends, and you can click on that. And let's take a look at what it's looking at. By the way, John, uh, by the way, John, I, I see there's some folks that are uh, hitting the Q and A board, and they're making comments about how they are actually already they're back testing right now, thanks to you, and verifying uh, some stuff, and, and and just really amazed at uh, what Darknet can actually do. So here, here, here is a really good example of remember Johnson and Johnson was moving sideways all over the place. Well. Uh, you know, it's that that would be the kind of stock that would really work well in these uh, these put credit spreads in trading darknet. And this is the darknet trade. Actually, 
we would have we would have put on this credit spread right over here on the rebuy, and the rebuy would have was probably ended by now. It only it tr it only trades like this is this is only 15 days away. So this rebuy would have probably ended right here, and it probably would have had a nice profit. We could go back and take a look at all that, but this just kind of just shows you how this the put credit spread is a little bit different from the call in that it'll it'll capture more profits. They're not as much profits, but it 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 can it has these higher uh, percent probabilities that are going. On. Hey John, so um, the what, what's the difference between a um, like a rebuy and an add-on, and is there any? Um, uh, significant difference if you just skip the buy and you only buy rebuys or add-ons? Well, that's a very interesting question because I built the software to, 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 to answer that question. I, I didn't get into it, but we'll get into it now. So let's go back over here uh, to the Dow Jones 30 uh, for darknet calls. Uh, uh, you know, uh, guys, I, I'm going to go over here and change my setting to 30 seconds, so we can we can we, so I can show you a, a, the, some strong capabilities here you were not aware of. So I'm going to move this back up to 30. Uh, so we're going to have a little bit more dead time, but this presentation is basically over. So let's just do that. So we're going to go back here to calls. I'm going to switch this over to uh, down zone starting. By the way, I don't think you'll go anywhere else where somebody's hawking whatever trading technology they're hawking and allow you to take any stock list and back test it for the last three years at any time you want to see what it's doing. You just ain't going to find that anywhere. Uh, I'm showing it to you all here. Now, let's say you said to yourself, what if I only traded the rebuys and the add-ons? Okay, so uh, that's all we're going to do is just trade the oh, no no that hold on hold on that is in the stocks that is in stocks here stock events to trade i'm going to get rid of the buys we're going to trade the dow jones 30 we're going to go to 1500 uh, we're going to look at everybody in the output but we're only going to trade the rebuys and the add-ons and let's see what happens there And John, while you're um, while you're waiting for your answer, um, here's a really good question, and I know you have an answer for this one. But um, Gary's asking; he's following along on a dual screen, and he says he's getting different numbers of trades in his searches. And I'm pretty sure I know why, but but why is this? Because I was I, he had 30 seconds, and I have 10 seconds. So okay. what's what's uh, going on in your general settings is different than what he has, right? Remember, I'm, I'm mucking with these numbers. I'm sometimes playing with the upper right date, right. and I'm I'm I'm, I'm altering how, uh, how the search is is happening all over the place. If he wants to match me exactly, we would have to we'd have to copy screens, send them to each other, duplicate them, and run them, and make sure all time has gone by. Um, uh, I, I won't get into that at the moment, but. Okay. Uh, that, that that's subject to like somebody with emails and we email each other for a couple of days getting it all straight. But but he's okay, right? We're, we're, it's, it's he, he's not getting bad data. He's just got a couple of different he's changes. He's getting different data because yeah, it's, it's going to be different as I play around here and change parameters all over the place. Gotcha. We have to make sure we match exactly. Okay. We might not even have the same general settings parameters set. For example, we'd have to start there first. All right. We're st are we still waiting, or did you get did you get? Resolved? No, uh, no, it came back. Uh, uh, this this was the answer it came up with. Is it it, it this ended up being uh, the buys didn't do as well in the Dow Jones 30 as just doing the rebuys and the add-ons. Uh, I think we'd have to go to a little bit more statistical list. Like let's try the Nasdaq 100. I'm going to do it here first. And uh, hopefully with the stocks, this will uh, not take that long. And we'll remember these numbers that we see. Okay, so 68% and 67%. Now we'll bring the buys back in and try it again. Eighty percent and seventy percent. So in the in the in the list we've looked at, it was it, it wasn't just tr just trading the rebuys and add-ons did not do as well as including the buys. 
I think it's because over this recent time period we're looking at, there were a lot of really good buy signals that were happening. And you can, in fact, when you look at the Coca-Cola chart and the Boeing chart, uh, if you look at it, uh, there was a, there's lots and lots of really good buy signals, and those kind of really add to these percentages and jack them up. Awesome. John, this is fantastic. Uh, you, you did a, a fantastic job. I got to tell you, maybe it's the, um, the the crazy market we had today, or maybe it was uh, the, the, the topic of conversation, but uh, we had quite a bit of turnout. Uh, it's, it's been, uh, you know, this is one of the higher turnout webinars that we've had from, um, from registration to actually folks showing up live because a lot of people know they can get the recording. Um, but, uh, but, but this has been, uh, r really fantastic. Um, any other pearls of wisdom before we wrap this up? Uh, I'm going to throw in a, uh, uh, big giant number 20 there. I'm going to show you that when when the, uh, I have one pearl of wisdom, I'm going to back up to to the good times, uh, which was uh, ju just just a couple of weeks ago. Let's back it up to uh, let's try July 31st. So it's going into July July 31st. It's going for the 20 past days, and it's going to look and see how things were for 20 days of darknet trading. And there's a little bit of dead time here. So uh, we, th these, there were just buy signals all over the place. And, and then here's how Darknet did. This is how Darknet mostly behaves. You can see here about oh, around 80% of the dark, th this, is a, this is how each individual Darknet trade performance happened. If it's green, Darknet made money on the sell signal. You can like, for example, I can pick, let me see if I can see anything here that I stock that I recognize or here's Yahoo. So if you click on Yahoo, you come back up here and then there was, there was that Yahoo trade. There was the buy trade here. There was a sell trade here. Darknade made money. So when, when you, when you come down here and look at all this green stuff, 80% of the Darknet trades were green, uh, around 15, 10% were yellow break even and then there was a couple in the red but not that many. This is what you under normal conditions of the market when it's kind of trading up and down and sideways but not crashing like it did today. This is what Darknet's going to do for you. And with that pearl of wisdom we'll we'll call it a day. Wow. Thanks, John. I'm actually I actually got a couple of people saying, hey, you should be teaching one of these master series that, that we're doing. I may have to throw you in the mix uh, uh, down the road to uh, because there's just so much to learn. And, you know, um, but this was a great start. I would suggest to everybody who is who is watching this, whether you're here live or whether you happen to miss the live event and you're watching the recording, re visit this, watch this. You're probably going to need to watch this about three times. Um, because just there's just so much information uh, in the last uh, wow the last uh, uh, you know in the hour I mean just so much information you crammed in uh, I would say a whole day's worth of of information in the last hour and so um, it's um, really good stuff really good um, you know and and like you said the numbers really do speak for themselves and there is a there is a reason why it works better on the buy side than than it uh, it possibly could have. Uh, to the downside. Uh, John, fantastic presentation, buddy. I mean, the audio was great. The presentation was great. And uh, judging by the um, amount of, uh, of, of really great comments, uh, the, the, the folks on, uh, on the webinar love it. I, I, the only thing I would ask is that uh, what we're going to do, guys, is this is recorded. All right. I'm going to get you a recording of this tonight. That's the first thing. Number two, John, is there any chance you could put together a slide set for me uh, that that I can uh, uh, put as put together as a PDF file that could go along as a, a to accompany the recording. Yeah, I I'm I'm just going to save this off here. Perfect. Yeah, if you send it to me, I can I can put it together and uh, and create a uh, a PDF for for everyone. And then finally, uh, f finally, guys, um, uh, we're going to post this because this is something that that not just the partners. Uh, could take advantage of all the members, all the folks that, that use the tools can take advantage of this because everybody has access to um, 
to uh, uh, Darknet. And so I uh, want to make sure that all of you guys get um, get access to uh, to this. And so b- that being said, we're going to put it on the members site. And if you have questions for John, uh, you know, uh, if you're if you're, you're you weren't thinking of any or you have questions for John, uh, you know, he's he's not uh, uh, available on our um, discussion boards 24 seven. But I'm pretty sure he'll pop in there every now and then and check, take a look at some questions and, and answer them for you. But that will be in the uh, in the tools member side of the forum. All right, guys. John, thank you so much. This was awesome, buddy. Thank you, Tom. And uh, I'll be talking to you soon. And guys, uh, we had a, a a really big, hard couple of days here. We did two webinars yesterday. We did two webinars today, and you know we had partner events yesterday, and we had the uh, the trade stream thing going on today. And now we finished it up with Darknet. So a lot of information in the last couple of days. And so uh, you know uh, th- this, I really think, was a great ending to the last few days. And so uh, that being said, um, we'll have uh, the email going out to you real soon. And otherwise, the next time you'll hear from me is when we have the trade alerts for you uh, that are going out as well. All right, guys, take care. Thank you. And we'll be in touch. See you later, guys. Have a good night.